Hey everyone, what's going on? Elvis here. Today we're going to talk about Lineage Eternal. Let's get into it. <laughs> First of all, it's an action RPG MMO, which is really cool. It's very similar to Lost Ark, kind of similar-ish to Diablo 3, but very similar in combat, that kind of stuff. Anyway, now first of all, the game didn't quite hook me straight away. Selfishly, I have to say so. I felt like it was a lesser version of Diablo 3, just with poor AI. But as the game has unraveled, yeah, it's definitely sold me a lot more. But anyway, enough about my shit. Let's talk about the game. Now, I think a lot of people don't even know that the game will actually run on handheld devices. Now, usually this is a terrible thing, right? Bring out a game. Guess what's coming out on the iPhone as well? Everyone's like, oh, great. There, there goes the game. But in fact, it's actually quite cool because they're using, I believe, a streaming technology to be able to pull this off. The internets on phones are amazing the 4G technology and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, let's get into it. So they redesigned the combat system just to pull this off. I've never seen this before in any action RPG ever. It's like a drag and drop type system where it actually visually displays as well where your finger goes. And you can see this in the PC versions as well. So it's a hybrid, it's working in both. This is cool. The idea of being able to play a Diablo game on your phone, I'm sure appeals to a lot of people. Not myself, I don't like my phone. In fact, my phone is off a lot of the time. I hate my phone. I hate my phone the same way I hate Facebook. Now, some people have said that this has kind of slowed down the development. The game was expected to release in 2014 based on previous investor reports where they said they're gonna bring out a new MMO every two years. It was scheduled for 2014. Assumably, a lot of people think this has slowed down the development, but anyway, let's jump into some of the cool stuff about Lineage Eternal. Now, the game features both PvE and PvP, a long-awaited feature that a lot of Diablo fans have been waiting for. This might scratch the itch. The cool thing about this is that there are exclusive items for both game modes. Now, first of all, if you play WoW, you probably got a negative opinion about this. I don't play WoW, I also don't care. But uh, the idea of it is really appealing to me because I love PvP in games. Now, the itemization being taken away from PvP, is to, it sucks. I like being able to get new items for PvP exclusively. This is cool. A lot of extra work though from the developers. Let me know your opinion about it in the comments below. I'd love to just hear the bigger perspective on it all. I, I like this feature. Yeah. Now, because the game is an MMO, some of the quests have been shaped towards this style of gameplay as well, rather than MO. Now, the game features things like massive battles where you can play as, you know, the assumed role of the battle leader or whatever with a lot of other players in the game as well, all contributing. Now, this is about the closest thing you can get to playing, I'd say, Lord of the Rings, if you... I don't know if that's the right analogy. The highlights about this would have to be that they're displaying these type of features not through cutscenes. They're actually injecting, you know, NPC characters to run along with you. This is really cool. A lot of big titles do rely on cutscenes when it comes to massive battles like this. You know, the scope of this is very daunting for a lot of other developers. So I like the idea that you can jump in. It's an MMO. You've got, you know, five other people with you, a ton of NPC little characters, and you're taking down a massive siege, battling it over. Almost like uh, Diablo 2's final act, the first two waypoints or so, heading over to the Aryan Summit. A little bit like that, if you're familiar with that game. Now, I'm not going to jump into all of the characters into the game. I will just jump into one for now, and that is the Archer. The cool thing about the Archer is it's got the cliche Robin Hood, you know, bad guy, outlaw, but with good morale. That's kind of present in it. But the Archer does have some other cool things as well. So, obviously, it focuses on bows. And it's hybrid or it's theme style thing is actually summoning spirits. Now, in the Lineage Eternal with the Archer, unlike Diablo 3, the ammunition and the arrows is a resource. It depletes. If you use all your arrows, you have to get more and refresh your quiver. You have to manage your attacks pretty well. If you run out, you have to replace your quiver. And if you can't, you can't use any of your skills. You're stuck. A little bit extra depth there. Now, there is actually a skill called the Arrow Shower 
we've once again seen this in a lot of action RPGs before. Arrows come down from the sky, you guys know how it works. But something a little bit different, kind of like a bit of a twist to this, is that once you use this skill, it uses all of your arrows you have left in your quiver. This is the little bit of extra depth that is needed. Now, when I think about Lineage 2, at how many characters there are in this game, if they add this kind of depth, and it's not crazy, you know, mind-blowing depth, like say the Path of Exile skill tree or anything like that, which is questionable in itself anyway, but this kind of depth I think is really cool. If they pull this off for every single character, I'm going to be in love with this. This is just fantastic. I really like this. Now, some of the spirit skills that you can actually summon as well, do some pretty basic stuff like increase your damage, I'm assuming, you know, attack speed, that kind of stuff as well, but it actually adds elemental effects to your attack. So. The character depth once again gets a little bit strengthened here with the skills. You can go down different avenues. The spirit can actually jump in and join you in the game as well. It can actually have a physical presence and fight alongside with you. I assume this is going to be some sort of like an ultimate or like special ability. You can use it as a decoy to taunt enemies in, kind of like a totem, I guess you could say. Overall, I think this particular character looks really cool when it comes to ranged characters. The best character that I've seen so far would have to be the Assassin. There's a little bit of gameplay out there. That's probably the most appealing, but when it comes to ranged, overall, the whole picture here is that this is really cool. I like the in-depthness. Uh, that's a word I made up, by the way. I don't think it exists, but I did. I said it. I like the in-depth creation here, that they're, that they're actually pulling it off. I can't wait to explore more of these characters and to share my opinion about it as we go through, uh, to hold us down at least until Lost Ark bring it, brings out some new information anyway. Overall, I'm pretty happy about this. I'm letting Lineage Eternal uh, win me over, and hopefully it does. So far, there's so much to go over and explore. I'm actually genuinely looking forward to exploring more of it. Anyway, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe. I get a feeling we're going to see a lot more Lineage Eternal on the channel. I said I would, and yeah, we're just getting started. I'm kind of educating myself as well as uh, anyone else who's unfamiliar with it as we go. So it should be fun. My name is Elvis. This is Friend and Machine. Subscribe. See you later, guys.